Welcome to session 11 of your online tutorial sessions. Uh, today we're going to start a new study unit. We're doing normal distribution. <coughs> this, um, so we're still going to use some of the concepts that we have learned when we dealt with the basic probability. That we need to know and remember that your probabilities are between zero and one, and <clears throat> also the sum of all your probabilities should be equals to <clears throat> to one. Then we're going to deviate a little bit from what you have learned from discrete probabilities in terms of the sign, and I will I will explain why I'm saying that. Uh, when we look at normal distribution, uh, the sign for greater than and greater than and equal, they will be exactly the same. They will be ask, answering the same question. Whether you're doing greater than or greater than or equal, uh, we can just use the greater than. And it's things like that, so that you don't get confused and start asking questions. But you said greater than or equal is this and this and this and this. No. so. In normal distribution, our greater than and greater than and equal will always be the same. We will not be working with the equal probability of an inequal because we are using cumulative probabilities in normal distribution. But we will explain all that at a later stage. For now, do you have any comments, query, questions before we start with today's session? Anything you want to ask? <clears throat> Speak now or forever, forever hold your peace. Nothing. Okay. If there are no questions or comments, then we can start with our normal distribution questions or understanding our normal distribution. So by the end of today's session, you should be able to know the basic concepts of normal distribution. You should be able to know how to calculate the probabilities from a normal distribution using the probability of a Z less than A, probability of Z greater than A, or probability of a Z standardized normal uh, value lies between the two point A and B. And you should be able to use probabilities to find <clears throat> the X value or any other uh, parameter that they would have asked. And we should be able to use the normal distribution table. And we are going to use cumulative standardized normal distribution and I think it's table E2. And I will explain that table to you just now. Okay, <clears throat> so what is normal distribution? Normal distribution, we use a variable that comes from a counting pro, uh, a measuring process. So it, it uses a continuous variable. <clears throat> and we know that a continuous variable is a variable that is been measured. It's like we use the temperature va uh, variables. We use like your height, weight, your age, everything that is continuous variable, we can use or we can <clears throat> find the normal distribution of that variable. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, and we're going to learn how we calculate the probability of this continuous variable. So a normal distribution is a curve, which is a it, it's shaped in a belly shaped curve. So if you look on the on the right, you can see that the curve looks like, like that. So normally, when we talk about graphs, we use the line or we use a bar chart that will look like that, <clears throat> or a histogram and so forth. And if you take all of them, the, if a histogram creates a belly-shaped pattern, then we call that a, a symmetrical graph, or we call it a normally distributed information or data. And we know that a symmetrical uh, data will mean that the mean, the standard deviation, oh, sorry, the mean, the median, and the mode are equal. 
and that would make you uh, make a normal distribution curve. And <clears throat> in terms of the locality of the the data, we can determine that by using the mean because the mean is one of the measures of central location or central tendency. In terms of the spread of the data, we use the standard deviation because the standard deviation will tell you how dispersed your data is from the mean. And if this is our mean, it will tell us whether the curve is, um, the, it will be flat or it will be tall. <clears throat> and the range of your, your, your data or your random variables they will be from positive infinity to a negative infinity or from a negative infinity to a positive infinity. And when you draw a belly curve uh, graph, your graph will never touch the x-axis. So if the site is your x-axis, and uh, this one, fx is your y-axis, and your belly curve will never ever touch the x-axis anywhere. Okay, that is a normal distribution. Some of the properties for a normal distribution um, is when <clears throat> we change the value of your mean, then your, your graph will shift from left to right. So if the value of your mean becomes there, therefore it means your belly shaped curve will move to the left. And if the mean is there, it will move to the right. So changing the value of your mean shifts your distribution from left to right. Changing the value of your standard deviation will either flatten your curve or make it taller. So when you change the value of your standard deviation, it will either increase the spread, and when it increases the, sp the spread, then it means, because then the values of your your x values will be far away from the mean, then your curve will be flat because then they will be far away. But when you change, when it, um, when the, the, the standard deviation decreases, then it means this curve becomes closer to the mean, then it becomes narrow. So it will be like that. And so you can see that the distance between the belly curve and the mean will be closer to one another. So <clears throat> when you increase the standard, uh, the standard deviation, your curve becomes flat. When you decrease or when the value of your standard deviation decreases, it means your belly curve will be narrow, narrower. And those are the properties that you need to learn about normal distribution. Thing about the normal distribution curve is since we're using the x unit when we calculate the probability we want to convert those x units into a normal distribution because sometimes your x units are not normally distributed but you want to convert them into a normal distribution so that they fit well into the normal distribution curve and to do that we convert all those by using what we call a Z transformation score or a Z score, which is just a Z distribution, or we call it a Z score, or we call it a normal distribution Z value. So the Z score is given by your observation, which is your X value minus the population mean divided by the population standard deviation. And once we have standardized the X score by applying this formula, then we would have created what we call a normal distributed value. And with a Z distribution, it will always have the mean of zero. And that is the property of a Z score. It will have the mean of zero and the standard deviation. So the mean, it will have the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. And when your Z distribution has the mean of zero or has the mean, uh, the standard deviation of one, we say that distribution is a normally distributed uh, distribution. Okay, so how do we then calculate the Z score? 
If X is distributed normally with the mean of 100 and the standard deviation of 50, the value of, we need to calculate the value of Z or we need to calculate the Z distribution for X is equals to 200. We know the formula is Z is equals to X minus the population mean divided by the standard deviation. We are told that X is distributed normally with the mean of 100. So therefore, this is our population mean and our standard deviation of 50, that therefore that is our standard deviation sigma. And that 50 rand will be our sigma. And in the question, they would give us the X value. And there is our X value, which is 200. Then we can come and substitute the values. Our X is 200, our mean is 100, and our standard deviation is 50 rand. And we calculate 200 minus 100 is 100 divided by 50, which will be equals to 2. Now, when we work with normal distribution, we always need to remember to leave our, I need to also change my slides. We need to always leave your answer at two decimal, always. And I will tell you why we need to leave our Z score at two decimals, always. <clears throat> it's because when we go and find the probability on the table, then we need to use the two decimals. Okay, so always your Z score, you can leave it with, um, when you get to the answer, leave it at two decimal. And interpreting the formula or the equation that we just calculated, we say that where X is 200, we know that that is two standard deviation above the mean of 100 or two increments of 50 rent above the mean of 100. In the exam, you will not be expected to know how to interpret, but you will be expected to know how to do the calculation of your Z score. So you need to know that uh, you need to be able to identify what you are given in the statement and substitute correctly into your formula and answer the question. Okay, so that is calculating the Z distribution. Now I have an exercise. After me saying all that, let's refresh our mind by recapping on what we just said by answering this question. Which one of the following statement is incorrect with regards to the standard normal distribution? Number one, the standard normal distribution has the median of zero. So there it says it has the median of zero. Number two, the standard normal distribution is symmetric around the mean of zero. Number three, the standard normal distribution has a standard deviation of one. Number four, the normal standard, yo, the, no, the standard normal distribution has a variance of one. That is another one, the variance of one. Number five, the area to the right side of the mean is one, and the area to the left side of the mean is also one. So, Let's go back to our question, our, our statement that we had. So remember what we said. We said a normal distribution, ne? a normal distribution, the mean, the median, and the mode are the same. It's symmetrical and is distributed with the mean of zero and the standard deviation of one. Remember that. Let's go and answer the question. The mean, the median are the same. We know that normal distribution is distributed with the mean of zero. So therefore it means it's symmetric, mean of zero, correct. Then if the mean is zero and we know that it's a normal distribution, then also the median should be zero because the mean and the median are equal. 
we also know that it is distributed with the standard deviation of one. Therefore, that is also correct. It is distributed with the standard deviation of one. What is the standard deviation? Remember, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So if the standard deviation is one, oh, so sorry. If the standard deviation is one, therefore it means uh, our variance is equals to one because the the variance of one or will also give us the standard deviation of one. So therefore it means that is correct and which leaves us with one final answer which is number five which says the area to the right of the mean is one and the area to the left is one. So this question would have been, oh it not would have been, it is incorrect because why? Remember if the area underneath the curve if this are prob if this is where we calculate the probability therefore it means the sum of all the values underneath the curve of the prob of the normal distribution should be equals to 1 so the sum of all probabilities should be equals to 1 so if this is half of the graph to the left this should be 50% this should be 50 percent because 50 plus 50 is equals to one so this should be 0 0.5 and this should be 0 0.5 because half of one is 50 percent so reading the statement so this would have been incorrect and that is what we are Please make sure that you are muted unless if you want to ask a question. And now I'm giving you a chance to ask a question. Any question based on what we just I just explained. OK, so if there are no questions, then we can move on. The next exercise I want you to do scores of high school students on a national calculus exams were normally distributed with the mean of 86, the variance of 16. Calculate the score of the students that will have a score of 8. So what they want you to do is to calculate the Z score. I will write the formula for you. Z is equals to X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Based on the information given, what are you given? You are given the mean, the mean of 86. You are given the variance. Remember that is a variance. It's sigma squared of 16. You need to take the variance and calculate your standard deviation, which is the square root of your variance. You are given also the x value. So calculate the z value. Please ignore the, I don't think those are the right answers. Let's, let's just see, let's calculate and see if. Yeah, ignore those that are not for this answer.
Are we winning? I got minus 1.5. Yeah, negative 1.5. Yes. Same here. So we have, we are given the variance of 16. So the square root of 16 is equals to 4. So substituting all the values that given to us, our x value, we find it in the question, calculate the z score, which is 80 minus the mean of 86. The standard deviation of 4, and this gives us 80 minus 86 will be minus 6 over 4, which is equals to minus 1.5. And you can put a 0 at the end. You can say it is 1.50. Remember to leave your answers at two decimals, always two decimals. And when you round off, round off correctly as well. OK, and that's how you will calculate the z-score. Now let's look at how we calculate the probabilities. So finding the probabilities using the standard normal distribution z-score value, uh, we need to remember the following. The probabilities for a normal distribution that we're going to use, we're going to use a table with cumulative standardized normal distribution. There is a table called standard normal distribution table, which has the which has the probabilities of equal, which has the, the Z score relating to the probability of an equal of the exact. So, but the table that we are using looks at the the area underneath the curve, will, it's what the probabilities are that we are looking for. So where you see the red, that's where we calculate the probabilities. So the table that we're using, it uses the cumulative because if you look at where A is and the red, you can see that if we need to calculate the area underneath this curve where the red shaded area is, these are cumulated probabilities. If we're only interested in that white part area as well, this will be the accumulated probabilities that we will have to find there. It's not going to be a probability at the point there. So we only, we're calculating all of them that are in the white area or all of them that are in the underneath the curve. So <clears throat> you need to also know the signs because if they say calculate the probability of at least, you need to know that it is the probability of greater than or equal. Ne? And if they say probability of less than, you need to know that it will be the less than. Now, I also said to you, you're going to ignore when you see, when they say calculate the probability of at most, at most x, At most x is less than a. We, we're going to represent it as such, but with normal distribution, we can just say it is the same as the probability that x is less than a. They will mean one and the same thing because we're working with cumulative probabilities, not the probability of equal or the probability of exact. So since we're using cumulative probabilities, so the probability of at most or the probability of less than, they will mean one and the same thing. We are going to use, we actually, we are going to always constantly use the less than. We don't have to say less than or equal every now and then. We can just use the less than sign when we calculate these probabilities. So let's learn how do we find these probabilities. So because we're using the standardized normal distribution table, you cannot calculate the probability just by using the formula of the Z. We use the Z formula to standardize the X formula so that we can use the Z score, which is your Z formula or the Z score value that you found 
we use it to go find the probability on the table. So when we're looking for the probability of a less than, the table that we're going to look at contains the probability of a less than. The table has two sides. I need to make this clear. The table has the positive side of Z and the negative side of Z. Both the negative side and the positive side are probabilities of less than. Whether you are finding it on the, the less than side table, the less than side, oh sorry, the negative side of the table or on the positive side of the table. Every time you see those probabilities on the table, always remember that all of them are probabilities of a less than. What does that mean? Then it means once you have calculated your Z value, when you go to the table and you were asked to calculate the probability of X less than a value and you calculate the Z value, you're going to go to the table and look for the probability that corresponds with those two Z or with the Z value that you have calculated. And we're going to look at the table and you know that that probability that you find on the table answers the question that you were asked. So for the probability of Z less than a value, we use the value on the table to find that probability or that value on the table is your probability. So let's look at an example of the table. We're going to go to the actual table just now. I just wanted to indicate this. So the table, by looking at this, you can see there it's on the negative side of things. So from the negative side of things, it's the shaded area. The negative Z values has the probabilities inside. So all these values inside the table are your probabilities. All of them are your probabilities. These values here and those values there are your Z values. So these values on your left and the values at the top we need to combine them and create a Z value. Or when we have the Z value, we need to split it in so that we can create, we can go and find the values. We're gonna look at the table just now. Just wanted to show you. Then we also have the same table, table E2 has the positive side of things. So this one has the negative, this one has the positive. If you look at this, starts from the positive side and it goes to the less than. And that is why I was saying where we find the probability of less than A, the value we find on the table is your probability. So this is your probability. This is your probability. So what's the, what does all of this mean in terms of the Z value? So I'm just going to go out of this tape, this presentation and go to the table itself. So we're going to use the example that we have. Remember, we calculated the Z value. So let's say this is the question that we were asked and they say we need to calculate the probability that Z, uh, not Z, X is less than, X is less than eight. And I'm going to assume that we already did the calculation and we find that once we standardized the X value, we found that our Z value is less than minus 1.50. So I'm interested in this. Where Z is less than one minus 1.50. Remember that. So let's go out of this. I'm gonna discard. Then we go to the table. You need to go look for table E2. It should be always your first table on with if you're looking at your past exam papers. But if you're looking on your your study guide, you should go to your study unit six and you will find your normal distribution table. And it should say Q1 
cumulative standardized normal distribution. If it doesn't say cumulative standardized normal distribution, you must know that you're working on the wrong one. It always have to say cumulative standardized normal distribution. And since we're looking for the negative side, so I'm going to go to the negative side of the table. And remember, we're looking for the probability. I'm just going to reduce it again a little bit. So we're looking for the probability that Z is less than minus 1.50. Remember, the reason why I said always keep your table to two decimals, it's because of this. When we work with the normal distribution table, I'm going to give you a chance just now to answer to do one as well so that you can uh, learn how to use the table. When we work with this, the first two digit, the one digit before the comma and the one digit bef um, after the comma, we're going to find it on the left. The one digit with the negative side, the one digit before the comma and the one digit after the comma, we're going to find it on the left. The last digit, we're going to always find it at the top. The last digit, we're always going to look for it at the top. So that is why you need two decimals. So minus 1.5, we need to go to minus 1.5. That is minus 1.5. And we need to go to zero at the top. So you will notice that also at the top that it's only populated with the last second digit. All of them. So we just look for the last digit. We look at what the last digit is. If the last digit is zero, so we just go to zero. And where they meet, that will be where we will find the probability. So this will be our probability. So the probability of Z less than minus 1.50, just remove this, is equals to, just give me a sec. Just want to see the values is equals to so that probability will be equals to 0, 0,0668. Now I want you to find the probability where z is less than minus 2.35. Find the probability that Z is less than, I can make the table bigger so that for those who don't have it in front of them, 2.35. What is that probability? Zero point zero zero nine four. 0 0.0094. So we go to two, minus 2.3 at so the two digits on your left, and we go look for five at the top. And where they both meet, that will be the probability we're looking for. Yeah? So you know how to use the table. Is anyone still lost? Okay, if you are not, if you are still lost, let's do another exercise. Let's find the probability of uh, Z less than 1.3, uh, let's say 1.47, 1.47, the probability of Z less than 1.47. So it means we need to go to the positive side of the table. So we go into the positive side and we're going to look for 1.47. So the two digit 
and we need to scroll to seven. And that probability will be 0, 0,9292. And that's where we will find the probability. So let's do more exercise. Let's continue so that we can learn how to use this table. So let's So let X represent the time it takes to download an image file from the internet. Suppose X is normal with the mean of 18 seconds and the standard deviation of five seconds. Find the probability that X is less than 18.6. So in terms of our Z or our X value, we know that our mean is 18. Our X value, it says it is less than, so it's all the red values less than 18.6. We were told what the mean is, it's 18. We were told what the standard deviation is, it's five. Now we need to find the probability. Finding the probability means we need to standardize this X value and to standardize it we use the z score and we just substitute into the formula so z x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation our x is in the question it's 18.6 our mean is 18 we were given our standard deviation of 5 we are given and we just calculate 18.6 minus 18 is 0 0.6 divided by 5 gives us 0 0.12. This is just the Z value. So we need to go and find the probability that the Z value is less than 0 0.12. That's what we need because that's what the question said. We need to go find the probability that X is less than 18.6. And because we're not using the 18, the X value, we need to stand, first standardize the value, then use the standardized value to go find the probability. And that's what we do. We standardize the X value to, and we found that the standardized X value is 0, 0,12. We use the 0, 0,12 to go find the probability on the table. So we know that our Z value was that. We need to go to the table. So this is just to demonstrate or illustrate the standardized value. So our mean, remember, when uh, we have a normal standard distribution, the mean is zero with the standard deviation of one. So we have just standardized it. We just need to go and find the probability on the table. I'm going to go to the table, the actual table. So we need to go find the probability. Uh, and where do we find that probability of 0, 0,12? Positive or negative side? Positive, positive side. On the positive side table. So we just go to the positive side of the table. We need to look for the probability that Z is less than 0, 0,12. One, two. So we go 0, 0,1 on the left, 0, 0,1 on the left, and then we go and look for the last digit is two, and the, for the answer is 0, 0,5478. 5, See how easy it is? Very easy to find. 5478. And that's how you find the probabilities. Easy. Okay, going back. Uh, this was just to demonstrate, but we already did that. So this will just show you that the area underneath the kef for the red shaded area is 0, 0.5478. That is what we just found. Okay, there is your exercise. 
the owner of an appliance store uses a normal distribution with the mean of 10 and the variance of 9 to model the weekly net sale. Calculate the probability that X is less than 3.5. So remember, the less than, so it means you need to calculate the probability that X is less than 3.5. And calculating that, I'm going to do it for you because I just want to, to get to the next section. I will give you an opportunity on the next one to do the calculation. Uh, 3.5. So, because I also want to demonstrate something, how we get the same value. So now, we need to convert or standardize our X value by using the Z-score. And we know the Z-score formula is X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Please mute your microphone. Okay, so now we just need to substitute the values. So what are we given? The mean of 10 The mean of 10 we are given the variance of nine, therefore, our standard deviation will be the square root of nine, which is equals to three. And we are told what the X value is because the X value is in the question. So our X is 3.5 minus our mean is 10, divided by our standard deviation of three. Probability of Z less than, if we calculate this, what do we get? Do the calculation from your side as well. It's 3.5 minus 10 equals minus 6.5 divide by 3 equals minus, minus 2.17. Minus 2.17. Seven. So don't look at this and say, oh, here is my answer. That is not your answer. This is not the correct answer. This is the Z value. So now since we have the Z value, we need to go to the table. I'm gonna go out to the table. Keep table. We're looking for, oh, let's go back, minus 2.17. Where do we go? To the negative, negative side. Negative side. Yes, we go to the negative side of the table. We're looking for 2.17. Up, 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 up. Okay, so we're looking for 2.1 probability of Z minus 2.17. So it's 2.1 and we need to go to the end of the table. Six. The probability we're looking for is 0, 0.015. 0 0.150. That's the probability that we're looking for. And that is the answer that we are looking for. So this will be 0 0.0150.
zero. So the probability that X is less than 3.5 is 0, 0,015. Okay. And that is how you find the probability of Z less than a value. Ne? Now, to look for how are we going to do now, how to find the probability when we are given the greater than. So also, if they say, what is the probability that Z or X is, let's use X, the probability that X is at least, which is greater than or equals to a value, or, oh, not or. So if we need to find that probability of X greater than or equals to a value, it will be the same as finding the probability of Z greater than a value. One and the same thing. So the greater than or equal and the greater than, they will mean the same because we're working with cumulative values. But now, since we know that when we find the, the, the probabilities on the table, the table contains the probability of Z less than A. So that is the table. The table has the probability of Z less than a value. Then it means if we have to find the probability of Z greater than a value, then it means we need to be doing 1 minus the probability of Z less than a value because we need to, to subtract 1 from the probability that we have on the table. So in order for us to find these probabilities of a greater than, which is the shaded area, oh, sorry, which the, the probability of the shaded area red, we need to subtract the probability that we find on the table, which is the probability of a less than, which is the unshaded area, the white area. And that is why we say one minus the probability we find on the table. And that is for all where we are asked to find the probability of at least or the probability of a less than. When you are asked, find the probability of X greater than a value, you are going to go to the table, the Z table, the value you find on the Z table, you're going to subtract it from one. Let's look at an example. Suppose X is normally distributed with the mean of 18 and the standard deviation of 50, or sorry, of five. Find the probability that X is greater than 18.6. Therefore, we are told we need to find the probability of X greater than 18.6. Then we need to find the standardized value of that probability, which then means we need to find the probability of greater than, we substitute the values, our mean is 18, our x is 18.6 minus 18 divided by our standard deviation of 5. We did do this calculations, so I already know the answer because we, we used it as an example previously. So this will be 0, 0,12. <clears throat> so I cannot find this probability of greater than 0, 0,12 because the table only has the probability of Z less than. Therefore, in order for me to find this probability of a greater than, I'm going to say 1 minus the probability of Z less than 0, 0,12, because that one, I can find it on the table. And it's a complement of the 
the one probability that we're looking for. One minus, then I must go to the table. You go to the table, keep. We go to the table, we go look for 0, 0,12, which we will find on the positive side of the table. 0, 0,12, which is 0, 0,5478. Zero comma one two is zero comma five four seven eight. So we're going to go to back here zero comma five four seven eight, and therefore that probability will be equals to zero comma four five two two. One minus. 0, 0,5478 gives us 0, 0,4522. The reason being why we're doing that, why we say one minus that, is because we know that the area underneath the curve is equals to one. And since we are only looking for that area, the red shaded area, and we are able to find this blue area on the table, we can use the complement event, which is one minus the probability of the event that is not part of that one that we are looking for. So that will be one minus 0, 0,5478, which is one minus the probability of the value we find on the table, which is equals to 0, 0,4522. Any questions? If there are no questions, then I can give you an exercise just to give you a feel of how we do the probability of greater than. Same question that we used previously. I guess you still have the Z values. So we know what the mean is. Mean is 86. We know that the standard deviation is the square root of your variance and our variance is the square root of 16, which is equals to four. And we are looking for the probability of X greater than, greater than eight. Calculate your Z score. And when you are done, if you want me to go to the table, let me know and say, please go to the table, but you need to tell me which side of the table you are looking for. Actually, we can, yeah. Are we winning? Do you want me to go to the table or do you have a table?
Let's go to the table. Positive or negative side of the table? Negative. Negative side. Okay. You must tell me where to stop. Or I can make it smaller. Because I don't have the values. So you know what you're working with. Okay, now. Yes, so you can stop. No. Okay, now. Okay, so can I make it smaller again? In case no, I have missed some of the values. It looks fine. Thank okay. You. I'll remove this. Are we done? Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's see. Uh, so you're saying your probability is 0 0.9332. Okay. Yes. Let's work it out together. Okay. So we know that we're looking for the probability of z less than x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Probability z less than what is our x value? It's always given in the 80. question, which is 80 minus the mean 86. of 86. Divide by the standard deviation. Four. 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 And the probability of Z less than what is 80 minus 86 is minus 6 divided by 4. You got min minus, minus 1.50. 1.50. So we need to go to the table and go find 1 minus the probability of Z less than minus 1.50. So let's go to the table. We go to the table. We look for zero minus 1.50, which is this, because I know that this is zero at the top, which will be the first column, which is 0, 0.0668. Mm -hmm. So therefore, this, take it back, 1 minus 0, 0.0668 which is equals to 0, 0,09932. There's an error there. There is an error. Yes. It should uh, be? On what? number two, it should be 0, 09332. Double three. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. I will fix that as well. I will email you guys the right slides as well, including the first one. Okay, right. Mm. 
any question before we move? So that is clear, ne? You know that for the probability of Z less than A, the value you find on the table, that will be your probability. For the probability of Z greater than A, we say one minus the table value, ne? That's how far we've gone. You will know, you will remember this. You will always remember that for the probability of less than, you will find the value on the table. For the probability of Z greater than, you will say it is one minus the value you find on the table. Agree? Happy? Yes. 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 So now let's move to how we find the probability of between. Now, if we need to find the probability of between, we're only interested at the orange section, not the white shaded area. Sorry, not the non shaded area, the white non shaded area. We're only interested in the orange shaded area. This is the between. We need to be able to find this probability. So now, when we find this probability, it's easy. We're going to find the value on the table. But the value that we find on the table, we're first going to find the probability of Z less than B. So we're going to take this side first minus the value we find on the table for the probability of Z less than A. So it means we're going to take the table value for B side of things, we're going to subtract the table value of the value we find for A. So we're just going to take the table value there and the table value there. And that will give us the probability of between. So we say that minus that side. Let's look at an example. Suppose that X is normal with the mean of 18 and the standard deviation of 5, find the probability that x lies between 18 and 18.6. So we can calculate the z value. Our x is 18, our mean is 18, our standard deviation is 5. 18 minus 18 is 0 divided by 5 will give us 0, 0, 0,00. We do the second part, which is 18.6. Calculate the Z value. X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Our X is 18.6. Our mean is 18. Our standard deviation is 5. And we know that that is 0, 0,12. We then need to go and find the probability that Z lies between 0, 0,12 and 0, then it means we need to go and find the probability that Z is less than 0, 0,12 minus the probability that Z is less than 0, 0,00. That's what we need to do. I'm not going to go out. I'm going to use this table. So we know that we calculated our Z value. We found that that one side is 0, 0, 0,00 and the other side is 0, 0,12. So we're going to do, this is the step, our Z of 0, 0,12 minus our Z of 0, 0, 0. So 0, 0,12, we go find 0, 0,1 and 2 at the end and we know that that is 0, 0,5478. We need to go find 0, 0,00, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and the 0 at the end, and that is 0, 0,5000. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So we subtract one from the other, and we find that the probability of that between is 0, 0,0478. That's what we do. We take the probability that from the red and the shaded, all this is 0, 0,5478. Remember, it would have been the shade, the red shaded 
all over, which is 0, 0,5. And we just need to subtract there. We just need to subtract this shaded, the non-shaded area so that we can remove only, be left with only the red shaded side of this. And that's how you find the probability of between. So what we have learned so far, probability of Z less than A is the value you find on the table. Probability of Z greater than A is one minus the probability you find on the table. The probability of Z lies between two value A and B is given by the probability that Z is less than B minus the probability that Z is less than A, which is the table value for B minus the table value for A. And that's all what you need to remember in terms of the normal distribution table. And this is what you're going to also have to remember until we get to uh, finish off and do hypothesis testing. So when we do the when we do the uh, confidence interval, you need to remember this. When we do hypothesis testing, you need to remember this. So just always remember to calculate the probabilities like this. Okay, so I think we have another exercise. Okay, this is just another example. Suppose X is normal with the mean of 18 and the standard deviation of five, of five. Find the probability that X lies between 17.4 and 18 point, and 18, sorry. So we need to go and find the probability that Z lies between X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, which then substituting, we know that the mean and the standard deviation. So we're going to substitute. So we do, we first start with the 17. So it will be 17.4 minus our mean of 18 divided by our standard deviation of five. And on the other side, 18 minus the mean of 18 divided by the standard deviation of 5. 17, calculate this for me quickly. 17.4 minus 18 divided by 5. What do we get? Minus 0 0.12. Minus. 0 0.12 is less than and 18 minus 18 is 0 divided by 5 will just give us 0, 0. Comma, comma 0 0. Now we need to go find the probability so it means we need to go find the probability that z is less than 0 comma 0 0 minus the probability z is less than minus 0, 0,12. Going to the table to go find the probability of 0, 0, 0,00. We know that that is 0, 0,50. Five zero zero. We just did this. We did find it. It was zero comma zero zero. We just need to go find the probability of a negative one comma negative one point two. Ah, is it one point one two or one point two? Zero point zero point one two. One 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 two. Zero point. So it's not that. It's zero point. Uh, let's go first to the top. Oh, wait, sorry. 
two is this column. We just need zero point. We need zero minus zero point one two. So it's the third column. Zero point one two is zero point four five two two. So minus zero point four five two two. Am I writing it right? Four five two two. So just do the calculation. Zero point five zero 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 minus zero point five four five two two. And that's the probability of between. Any questions? If there are no questions, I want you to find the probability that Z lies between the two values. Now, with this question, they are not asking you to go calculate the Z value. They've calculated it. They've given you the Z value. So you just need to use the Z value to go find the probability. So that's your exercise. So you need to do the probability of Z lies between minus one point one zero and one point nine zero. Do you want me to go to the tables? Let me know just now. So remember that you will need to go find the probability of Z less than one point nine. And you need to go find the probability of Z less than minus 1.1. You want me to go to the table? Let me just go to the tables. We'll start with the positive side. We're looking for 1.9. So that is... Zero point nine seven one three. And we're looking for minus one point one four, so we need to go to the negative side. One point one. which is 0 0.1357 minus 0 0.1357. Do the calculations. And if you are lost, ask.
Do we have the answer? <coughs> Number yes. three. It is 0, 0.8356. 0 and that's how you find the probabilities. Easy, na? <laughs> easy, 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 straightforward, easy, easy. Okay, so you're not going to always get easy questions like this. Sometimes they might give you the probability and they might ask you to find the value of X or the value of the standard deviation. You should be able to work backwards. You should be able to know how you found this probability or that probability or the probability of the less than. You should be able to know how you did that in order for you to be able to go back. Like, for example, if you are given the probability and you are asked to find the value of x, then it means you need to use that probability. What I mean by find using the probability, it means you will be given this probability, let's say 0, 0,073. That is the probability that they would have given you. You need to be able to know that this probability of 0, 0,073, you found it by using the z value of minus 2.4 and the one at the top. Don't forget the one at the top, this one. You will need to know that 0, 0,0073 corresponds to the z value of minus 2.44. Zero comma five zero comma zero five nine four corresponds to those probability to the z value of minus one point five six. Nah? You need to be able to work outside. And this would have been for the z value of less than. So what if so everything that I just did as an example now is the value of z less than. A value so we will find it there what if then they said uh, find x where the probability is greater than so if this one then they say it is greater than greater than a value is the probability of z greater than a value of 0, 0,073. If that was the probability that they, they give you, find the value of A such that the probability, which is your Z value, where the probability of that Z value is 0, 0,073. Do not come here and look for 0, 0,073 because then if you say that is the z the value of a is minus 2.44 you will be wrong because this probability of 0, 0,073 they found it by using 1 minus the probability of z less than a you must remember that the probability of z greater than a of 0, 0,073 is not corresponding to the z value of minus 2.44 because that 0, 0,073, they found it. The answer to that question was 1 minus the probability of the value they found on the table. So what you need to do in order to find the actual z value, which is the value of a, you will have to say so 
in order for you to find the probability of z greater than if we need to find the z value a of 0, 0,07 uh, what was that 0, 0,0073 you will have to say 1 minus 0, 0,0073 should give you the actual value of a which is equals to 0, 9, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, inside this probability table and go find this value which you will find uh, in the negative side all the probabilities are small like you will notice that all the probabilities that with 0, 0,000 some number and goes to 0, 0,046 so they are small so when you get a probability which is bigger than five I'm sorry lazy 5 2 0, 0,51 you need to go to the positive side of the table sorry lazy yes that answer is 0, 0,9927, eh? 9, 0, 9, 9, 9, 9, 0, 9927. Wait, uh, I'm still looking for an eraser. Uh, just give me a sec. So the answer here is 0, 9, 9, 927. Two seven, okay. So we need to go find this number zero comma nine nine two seven. So we go find it on the negative side zero comma nine nine two seven zero comma nine nine can go up a little two seven zero comma nine nine two seven and then I can go out and go look for that probability. 2.44, probably. So then our A value will be 2 point. Our A value will be 2.44. That is the Z value. And that's how you will remember all this. So. When it's greater than, remember that the answer that the probability that you're looking at is this one minus. It was found by using one minus that value. Okay. So let's look at this example. And this will be our last section. So since we know that our Z value, you will not be given this equation. So we know our Z value. It's x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. If we are not given the mean, then we must make x the subject of the formula. And making x the subject of the formula, it means we multiply z by sigma is equals to x minus the mean. And we take the mean to the other side. It becomes positive. So it will be mean plus the z of sigma is equals to x. You just need to know how to change the subject of the formula. If we were asked to calculate the standard deviation in the in, in, in that instance, so this one we were calculating x. So if we need to find the standard deviation, so we know that z is equals to x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. We multiply the side by the standard deviation. So we'll have standard deviation and we multiply by z x minus the mean and we need to divide the side by z divide that side by z z and z cancels out the standard deviation will be x minus the mean divided by z so this z will be your z values on the table so let's look at an example to apply this let x represent the time it takes in seconds to download an image from the internet. Suppose x 
is normal with the mean of eight and the standard deviation of five. Find X, so we need to be calculating X, such that the download, such that 20% of the download times are less than X. So the other important thing you need to remember is the sign. So when they say it's less than X, so therefore it means when we found the probability that X is less than an X value that we're looking for, which is that, that probability was 0, 0,20. I'm going to put four zeros because on the table we work with four decimals. It's 20%. So if, oh, sorry. If we know this, therefore, it means this actually should be Z for X, X value. So if we know this, that this is the probability, but we also know that that probability, we found it by using uh, less than. So therefore, it means 20%, we will find it on the table. And where the values correspond, that will be our Z value. So we go to the table. Let's keep everything. Go to the table. Let's go look for 0, 0,2000. We won't find it in the positive side. We need to go to the negative side of the table. 0, comma, remember, we're looking for 0, 0,2000. So let's go find 0, 0,1, 0, 0,2. So it's somewhere in between those two. Uh, OK, this is far away and this is close by 0, 0,2. If I look at this, even if we round it off. Uh, this will be the closest one, so it corresponds with we're going to use minus minus 0, 0,8 and then we need to go to the top and at the top it corresponds to, to 4 so that will be minus 0, 0,84 so going back so we know what the value of this small x of ours is so this will be the probability that Z is less than minus 0, 0,84. But that is not what we're looking for. Now, all I, keep, I need to do is expand my Z, remove the probability because I no longer need that. So I can say in my Z, is equals to X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. I know that my Z is minus 0, 0,84 because I did find that. I don't know what my X value is. My mean is eight. My standard deviation is five. Solve this. It will be minus 0, 0,84 multiplied by five because we multiply with what is underneath, will be equals to X minus eight. And we can take eight to the other side, minus 0, 0,84 times five, minus, oh, plus eight is equals to X. Since I don't have a calculator with me, I will rely on you to, cal to do the calculation. So multiply 0, 0,84 times 5. Minus 0, 0,84 times 5 equals minus 0.42 plus 8. Is equal to? 
and see if we got it right. So to recap, we use 20%, we go find on the table and we go look for the Z value. And once we have the Z value, we can substitute that into the formula and calculate. And the answer is 3.8. So 20% of the value from the distribution with the mean of eight and the standard deviation of five is less than 3.8. And that's how you work backwards. With that, any questions? Because it concludes today's session. On Saturday, we will do the activities that relate to this so we can practice more. Any questions Lizzie, before I continue? Mm -hmm. Can we do one more exercise um, when we're working backwards? Okay, I don't know. Uh, we can. Let's say I'm going to ask you now, since I'm not going to. I don't have any other question, but I can formulate the question just now. Uh, let's see what time is it? You, okay, we still have a lot. We have plenty of time. Sorry. To come back here. I need to go out. cut because I need to get rid of this. So we're going to use the same question. I'm just going to change a couple of things here for you to work out. So instead of less than, I'm changing it. Same question, greater than. That is your question. Find X such that 20% of the downloads are greater than X. So the first thing you need to do is to go find the probability that Z, let's use A as our example. Uh, Sorry, we're not finding Z less than A. We're finding Z greater than A. Remember that? Z greater than A of 0, 0,2000. Now, we know that that they found it by using 1 minus 0, 0,2000, which is 0, 0,8000. I'm just going to use that. So it means we need to go to the table and find the Z value that corresponds with this. So let's go to the Z value table. We're looking for 0, 0,8. We are not in the positive side. We need to go to the next. Sorry, we need to go to the positive side and look for 8, 0 0.8. 0 0.8 to 3. So that will be very far. This will be very close by. So the answer will be 0, 0,8 for 4. So going back, our PZ greater than 0, 0,84 would have given us 20% of the time because we would have used 0, 0,8 to go find that. So since we have that, we no longer want the probability, so we can replace 
z equals x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. We replace the z value with 0 0.84. We're looking for x minus our mean of 8, our standard deviation of 5. 0 0.84 times 5 is equals to x minus 8. Take 8 to the other side. So let's just calculate this. Uh, 0.84. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I forgot to put 4. 0.84 multiply by 5. gives us 4.2. So this will be 4.2 plus 8 is equals to x. Therefore, our x will be equals to 12.2. And that's how you will do this. I will find more exercises for Saturday so that we can practice even more. So sometimes you will find where it says exceeding, which means it's greater than, or it's less. So you will, we will see if I can, I, I can find all those exercises with different questions of which big ones. Hi, Lizzie. Yes. I'm sorry, can I just ask uh, when, while you're still there? Mm -hmm. So the minus eight there, X minus eight, when it jumped to the other side, does it become positive? Because I see yeah. there you're saying 4.2 4, plus eight. Yes, so when, okay. it, when it moves over, it changes the side. So if it was positive eight, minus. was it going to be minus? Yes. Cool, thank you so much. No worries. Any other question? If there are no questions, we are done with normal distribution. What you have learned, you've learned the basic concepts of normal distribution. You've learned how to compute the probabilities of a normal distribution. You know that the probability of Z less than A is the value you find on the table. The probability of z less uh, greater than a will be the one minus the value you find on the table. The probability of z lying between the two values will be the probability of the second value minus the probability of the first value. We also learned how to use the table to find the probability. We've also learned how to use the table to go find the z value outside. And with that, it concludes today's session. I will see you on Saturday. Next week, Wednesday, we will be doing sampling distribution. The same concepts we just dealt with today, we are going to do them again next week, Wednesday. So by the end of next week, Saturday, you should be able to do your assignment three. So chapter four and chapter five, oh sorry, chapter six, or which is study unit six and study unit seven that we're going to do next week. They make up your assignment three. So please, those who are way behind with their assignment one and assignment two, make sure that you complete them so that you caught up with everything in order for you to be able to do your assignment three. And with that, concludes today's session. Any comment, any query, any question, any feedback, you can unmute. And we are done. 
Thank you.